Happy New Year. I'm Linda Brayman. Another year has begun for Senior Moments. Thank you for your support through the years. We hope you will continue to watch Senior Moments. Senior Mo Moments covers events and activities at senior centers in the Ann Arbor Ypsilanti area, such as the Ann Arbor Senior Center, Turner Senior Resource Center, the Pittsfield Senior Center, and the Ann Arbor Community Center. Also, the show provides valuable information for seniors on such issues as health, wealth, finance, and entertainment. Senior Moments is a monthly show. It premieres on the last Sunday of the month at 5 p.m. and it reruns 10 times a week on CTN Channel 16. Please check our website, a2gov.org backslash CTN for the playback schedule. Also, you can watch the show on YouTube. Please log on to youtube.com backslash CTN Ann Arbor to view current and archive shows. You could watch something about health, entertainment, events, or even things to do. So tune in. It's always an adventure. Happy New Year. I'm Linda Brayman, host of Senior Moments. 2023 was a very busy year for Senior Moments. We hosted a wide variety of individuals who talked about their activities and shared valuable and interesting information for seniors. Today, we would like to review some parts of the shows. In January, in the January show, Kim McIntyre, Recreational Manager and Stacy Jackson, Recreational Specialist from Pittsfield Township Senior Center joined us. Here are some highlights from that show. I guess the latest news is that you have a new staff member. Yes, and it's so exciting to have her here. So let's go to Stacy Jackson right now. Now, Stacy, this is your first time here and I'm sure it won't be your last. We <laughs> want to hear all about you, what you will be doing for Pistol Senior Center, and how you ended up with senior um, as the position you have. And to start you off, I'm going to ask a simple question. Are you a native of Ann Arbor or from some other place? 100% Ann Arborite. Grew up and raised most of all my life uh, here in Ann Arbor. I now have a senior at Huron who has also, growing up in Ann Arbor as well, love this town and would only leave if I had to go somewhere warm in retirement. Tell us, what does a recreation specialist for adult seniors do? This place was a beloved place for a long time for a lot of people. And I get that feedback almost every day, starting to see some of those people coming back into the facility. So, um, you know, my job is trying to maximize that calendar to get as many different new activities and that we can and try some new things, get some old instructors back, just try to like put everything to the wall and let's see what sticks. And if it doesn't, let's try something new. So we're doing a lot of new, you know, our, our focus really is like socialization, exercise and, and enrichment. And so I'm trying to fit all those pieces into a very large Google doc of time to see how we can put in as much activity as we can here to as many broad uh, audiences as we have. Once again, I want you to give us the location and contact number. We are located at 701 West Ellsworth Road on the corner, southwest corner of State and Ellsworth, right near the roundabout. You can go through Airport Drive and go around Costco and come, come our way so you don't have to go to the roundabout. Our telephone number is 734-822-2120. Angela Bingham of Osher Lifelong Learning Institute at Turner Geriatric Center shared information about the organization and the very interesting classes they offer. I hope some of you took advantage of those classes. Take a look. So tell us what is the purpose of OLLI? The purpose of OLLI is to really allow older adults 50 and older to continue lifelong learning. Um, you don't have any have to have a degree to participate in any of our classes. If you just have a passion to learn um, and you want to socialize and engage, this is an opportunity to participate in OLLI. Now, tell our audience about some of the events and classes that OLLI is offering this year. 
Well, we have over 200 classes that we're offering this um, in January. Um, so there's a, a wide range of classes, but Ali at U of M is really known for our lectures. We have a distinguished lecture series that takes place on uh, Tuesdays at uh, Washtenaw Community College. And we have our Thursday lecture series that takes place there as well. We have study groups um, that take place sometimes via Zoom, sometimes hybrid. So they're both or in person um, at the Turner Center and different locations around the Ann Arbor area. And then we also have an alley out of town. So we have some trips where people can actually travel um, together uh, for activities throughout uh, Southeast Michigan. And then we've just brought back our Evenings with Ali programming, which is a year for those people who are still working like myself, who are 50 and older and wanna kind of learn about Ali. And so we have some evening programming available for them with a, additional other classes as well. But those are kind of our top ones. Yes. Well, I noticed you offer Chinese. Is that Mandarin? I guess it is. <laughs> it is Mandarin. Oh, that's, I, I would really love to learn Chinese. And so far, here's what I've learned. Ni hao. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ali is a great place for you to learn then. <laughs> oh, May was an opportunity to delve into art. I don't know about you, but I've always envied artistic people. I can't even do stick figures very well. Brigitte Masson interviewed Deborah Golden, a watercolor artist who teaches art classes at the Ann Arbor Senior Center. Talk about classes to learn new things. Senior Moments is definitely there for you. I, I see you brought several of your yeah. artwork in, mm -hmm. in different media as well. Yes. And, uh, and I know I'm quite struck by this particular one. I just love this watercolor. Maybe you could explain, you know, uh, uh, where it is mm -hmm. and what inspired you to do this. So uh, I would be interested in that. Sure, sure. Um, this is in, inspired in part by my walking through local parks, okay, people? Some of you might think it's just like, where is this? You had an idea of where it might be. This is Lily Park Pond fall reflections, and I took the photo of it, I took a number of photos, corner of Platt and Ellsworth, and I loved the colors, the reflections in the water. Um, in addition to your basic watercolor classes, I've done special topics, such as people and portraits in watercolor, animals in watercolor. This one was about water in watercolor. How do we show the lakes, the rivers, the streams? And I thought, oh my gosh, so this one I did for the class, and we did two or three sessions with this. So this was a longer one of planning out, uh, drawing it first, because in watercolor, we have to plan where we're saving the light areas and working from light to dark, and then working with them of showing how to have the colors, the light of the trees, seeing the reflections. Sometimes I'd even have them turn their picture sideways. So if you're thinking about the reflections, it's like a butterfly. This side mirrors that side. And then I take off from the, um, the photo and rearrange some elements, such as the plants over here, to make that composition, even through in the telephone lines. Oh my yeah, goodness, I didn't even see that. Yes, yeah, it, right. it should yeah. not stand yeah. out. Yeah, I see. Yeah, but right. But it's those little details that yeah. I love that tell you exactly where this is. Could you stand and find? I can think back of going through the hikes and going that I could get to here on these rocks and how close I could get to the water without falling in. Um, but water in watercolor and the special challenges. So within this, I'm showing them how to paint water, how to paint the sky how to paint the trees, working with that contrast, and, and still having it feel fresh. And I really like making it feel like you're there. Uh, Deborah, I must say, I, I'm really awed by this particular painting because I own several watercolors myself. Oh. Uh -huh. And I would like you to come and visit me because I have one which had gotten an award, you mm -hmm. know, from a, a friend of mine who painted. She, she was taught by Kokoschka. I mean, so I don't know, she's probably not alive anymore. Yes. But your details are just amazing. I mean, that's a really 
struck me with this particular watercolor. I just love this. I must say that. July focused on transportation for seniors. The older I get, the harder it is for me to drive. I cannot see well at night anymore. I can no longer drive and think about other things. I have to stay focused on driving. I could really use a chauffeur. Thankfully, Brigitte talked to Tracy Bird, coordinator of the Ride Mobility Services. And guess what? They have a special transportation service for seniors called the Gold Ride. If you missed it, here it is again. How about the gold ride? Do you still do this gold ride? And uh, so maybe you could explain what the gold ride is. Yes, so gold ride is a program strictly for persons. It's age-based, so any person 65 or older um, can qualify for a gold ride card. And with that card, that allows you to ride our public buses for free. Now, we do have a shared ride program. This is where things changed a bit. You know, we talked about the changes right. um, pre-pandemic and, and now. Um, Gold Ride, we still do that same shared ride service. However, it is contracted out with Golden Limousine. So we do not oh, do any of the booking for that. Yeah. Um, once you qualify for Gold Ride, you get a user's guide yeah. and numbers to call to book trips. Right. So do you have to pay for this? Uh, I yes. Mean, I mean, the, the customer pays for it, or how, how does that work? Yes, it is, and, and the cost has gone up. It is $20 each way for those rides, yeah. um, for that shared ride service through Golden Limousine, um, or for the Gold Ride program. Yeah. Is that fairly new? Because I've never heard of it. It is. That was something when, um, in 2020, actually, um, August of 2020, the Gold Ride program was put on pause. Um, and then in t August of 2021, it came back with those changes. Um, so I know we don't have a lot of time to today to discuss why yeah, those changes right, took yeah. place. Um, however, um, they did take place, and so it is back, um, and that's the way it's been running so yeah. for the last, I guess we're in 2023, so almost yeah. two years I think years you already now. answered, you know, how to apply for it. You just have, you know, oh. to get this. Yeah, you just need to come to our office on South yeah. Industrial Highway where there are weekdays um, between the hours of 8 and 5. Just bring a proof of ID showing your age, right. and you get your card on the spot. And that you live in the community. No, no, actually, anybody, anybody? Can, anybody oh. can apply. We get a lot of Gold Ride applications the month of July. Um, art fair. <laughs> oh, <laughs> uh, people really? who are coming into town. Oh, I didn't mm -hmm. know that. That's mm -hmm. fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. I've actually had people call from out of the country or, or email um, out of the country and um, send me information oh. and said that they were going to be, you know, using our buses when they get into town and they wanted this to be able to ride for This is great information. I didn't know yeah. that. So I can really share that too. Absolutely. Yeah. There is no doubt that Senior Moments keeps you up to date on senior activities. In October, Brittany Patton, Ann Arbor Recreation Supervisor and Director of the Ann Arbor Senior Center, reviewed the events and activities going on at the Senior Center. They are amazing. I was wishing I had time for even half of the fantastic things they offer. Now, what are some of the senior-only classes or activities that you have at the Center? Yeah, so the, the 65 and older senior-focused classes through Washtenaw Community College, we have watercolors, Right. As of right now, sorry, we have watercolors, which is maybe our most popular. It always fills up. Um, there's 25 students in each class. We have two different levels of Tai Chi. We just started an Italian language class this semester. Uh, we also started a photography class that is brand new to the senior focus curriculum. And that is teaching people how to use their phones like cameras and be able to edit and add lighting effects. Um, and then we have a line dancing class that we started last winter. And Linda, it's so funny. The first day, no one showed up. So D, our instructor, had us doing these line dances, and they are tough. I thought I was going to fall over and break an ankle. <laughs> but since then, people figured it out and that class is now full. So we have about 20 people that meet here once a week to do line dancing. Um, and then we have strength training twice a week. That's great, strength training. Are, are, is that like um, lifting barbells? How does that work? Yeah, yeah, so we have different sized weights anywhere from one to five pounds. Um, it 
uh, involves different stretches and, you know, the instructor's very accommodating. So if you have issues with balance, you're able to sit down and lift the weights. Um, so that's what I really love about all of our classes is that they can really be personalized to each person. Um, and every person that teaches knows how to adapt uh, the curriculum to each person's needs. November takes us closer to winter. Winter in Michigan is beautiful. There are so many picturesque scenes that I would love to photograph, especially when the snow and ice appear. And in a timely fashion, Brigitte interviewed photographer Susan Kelly and her sister, multimedia artist Margaret Kelly. And here they are. Both of you brought your art with you. Mm -hmm. And actually, Susan, you're the photographer. Maybe you would like to kind of mention, you know, tell about your photography and the two pictures you brought. P photos. Sure. sure. So these two pictures, the top one is Budapest in the parliament. And I was really fascinated by the light uh, of, of the building and the darkness of the sky and the contrast. And this picture is of the Odoff Gardens at Belle Isle in Detroit. Oh. And the flowers are so delicate and so beautiful. And again, the light of the sky and the detail in the, um, in the purple flowers. And this is one of our family's favorite flowers, hollyhocks, which were in our backyard. Oh. So those are two, two photographs. And I love um, actually taking them. And then I don't edit them. I just try to keep them like they are so that I can remember them as they were. Do you just do the photography for, for your pleasure or do it also Just sell? for pleasure. No, yeah. I mean, I've had a few people want to buy them, but I, but I do them for pleasure. And actually, as you mentioned, you have a gallery in your home. I've hung so many of my photographs in our home. Margaret, I mean, we have a wealth, you know, of your artwork here. And the colors are so vibrant and alive. And so tell us, you know, about your work. Well, thank you. Um, as I mentioned earlier, you know, the influence of nature on my work was really pretty profound. Even though my dad, who's an artist, as Susan explained, gave me this big tree trunk, which sounds really weird, but um, I had a tree trunk and I started drawing it, you know, and all the lines, you know, you mentioned my lines in this piece yeah, of work. Which, which is like uh, this, uh, is the, the, it's like ink and? It's, it's Croquil pen, and I had an uh, instructor here, drawing professor Richard Wilt here, who taught all of us students how to use a crow quill pen, which is very, very fine. Oh. So I just, um, after the tree trunk exploration, I started going more abstract, and I did these abstract drawings, which were also based on fabric and historical. There's a historical poem I kind of used to illustrate. Um, so there's a lot of influences that kind of weave together, no pun intended, because this looks like a weaving, um, to create what I do. Um, so I'm very interested, like some of these works, like this is a fingerprint. This looks like, you know, uh, maybe a geological map or something like that. But I'm also exploring the materials. There's crayon in there, watercolor. Um, you know, I have multimedia in that. And I really have a love of materials. You know, that comes from my mother who loved fabric and textures and things like that. So um, the things that are, these are, also, and this is a jelly bean. I call it jelly beans. But yeah, it also that's what I thought. I was just mentioning it. It looked to me like <laughs> jelly beans. Right. I call it jelly beans, but it really looks like cells, too. Yeah. And what I've done also, I have this here, is I've started <laughs> translating some of these to usable goods. You know, so this is my painting right here. And I work on a shop, and I create things to some things could be used in the home. So you can use this and also clothing. So I have clothing and, you know, totes and things like that on my website. So I like to try new things. I like to explore different areas. And I like to explore, but I do love materials. Like, I do love watercolor. Watercolor is one of my, my true loves and drawing. Thank you for joining us on Senior Moments. I hope you enjoyed the show. I'm Linda Brayman, and I'm thankful that you have chosen to watch Senior Moments. See you next time.